What's up everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs and today we're going to build Client Build 40 inside this. This is the Fantex N3 Evolve Mini ITX chassis. Hey guys, so as you could probably see behind me, I am actually in the process of editing this video right now. And I did not realize this, but in the middle of shooting, the battery on my microphone died. So the only thing that was recording audio for the second half of this video was the internal mic on the camera, which is pretty poopy. So I apologize for the echo that's going on in the second half of this video. Hopefully you guys still enjoy it. It's not terrible, you can still understand what I'm saying. But uh, you know, obviously things like this bother me, so I apologize. I'll make it up to you guys. Maybe. We'll see. So about a week ago, a client approached me and asked me to put them together a system uh, at a price point that is significantly lower than most of the systems that I build. So I was a little skeptical at first, not because I don't have the ability to put together a system at this price point, but rather because systems that go together for this much money generally don't perform up to the expectations of the buyer. I have a lot of people that approach me that say they're a college student or something along those lines and they have $500 to build a gaming machine that they want to play Doom on, and that's just not realistic. But this gentleman approached me with a goal in mind of playing a game called World of Tanks. Now, I had never heard of World of Tanks before he asked me to build him a system to play it. So when he gave me the target price, my initial reaction was, I can't do that. But then when he told me that the system was mainly to play World of Tanks, I went and I looked up World of Tanks recommended system specs. And this is them, right here. Basically, the game could run on a potato. But the system that the guy's using currently is uh, six or seven years old, I think. He said he's running on like a uh, NVIDIA 500 series graphics card. And you know, he's running out of storage space and his processor's kind of crapping out on him. So he wants something that's gonna be able to operate for him in a daily capacity and also play World of Tanks. So this is what I've come up with for him. First of all, this case. I've been wanting to build in this case ever since it was announced by Fantex. I actually have my main system, Deep Red, which you could see in this video up here, built inside the ATX version of this chassis. There's a lot of reasons that I went with the Fantex chassis for my main system, which has a custom water loop in it, a couple of radiators, two graphics cards, a lot of wiring, and everything fits nice, neat, snug, there's room for everything, I never have any issues with it, and it looks beautiful. So when I saw this version of the case with the red interior and the mini ITX form factor, I was actually pretty anxious to get my hands on it. And this build provides me the perfect opportunity to do that. The base of this system is gonna be the Pentium G4400 Skylake CPU. This is gonna be more than enough for this client's needs, and it has low power draw, it should be reliable for him for a number of years. He's not looking to overclock or anything like that. And honestly, if he wants to upgrade to a better Skylake processor, the chipset's gonna be there and you shouldn't have any problem with it. The G4400 is gonna be sitting in the MSI H110i Pro AC motherboard. Now I chose this motherboard for a couple of different reasons. One, it's an H110 chipset. Uh, we're not looking for any overclocking capabilities here. Uh, second reason is it does have built-in Wi-Fi, so there's gonna be no need to add an external card or anything like that. And the price point fit within the confines of the system. Storage in this build is provided by an ADATA 128 gig SSD for the boot drive and a Western Digital one terabyte blue drive for mass storage. This is a pretty standard configuration for a system at this price point. And no matter what, really right now, I do recommend throwing an SSD into a system. It's not gonna cost you a whole bunch of extra money and it's really gonna boost your performance. The video card I've chosen to go with here is the MSI GTX 950 Gaming 2G. This is gonna be a big step up from his 500 series graphics card. It doesn't draw a lot of power. It fits inside the case and the color scheme is gonna fit the black and red aesthetic of the Fantex. Uh, mini ITX chassis. For cooling the CPU, I really wanted to go with a tower style air cooler like the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. However, I did want to keep the color scheme and overall aesthetic consistent. And for that reason, I went looking for a black tower style air cooler and came up with the Enermax ETS T40. Now you notice on the package that this cooler comes with a blue LED fan, which will not fit our aesthetic. So I'm actually gonna replace that fan with an NZXT 120 millimeter fan uh, and also add a second 120 millimeter fan to the back of the chassis for ventilation and exhaust. To finish off the build, we're gonna add in some case lighting from BitPhoenix and also some individually sleeved power and PCIe cables 
from Silverstone. All right, guys, well, that's it for the components. Let's start putting this thing together. All right, so we're all done with the build. Now, I did shoot a time lapse of the build, but I didn't include it in the video just because it came out terribly, to be honest with you. The angle that I was shooting from was way too high, and with this new camera, I've actually not shot a time lapse yet. So I was trying out the mode where it actually takes bursts of photos uh, instead of a continuous video, and then I would just speed it up so that the camera itself is actually creating the time lapse. And I think the angle that I was shooting from, combined with the fact that it wasn't a continuous video, just, just completely destroyed the entire perspective that I was going for. It's my fault, but uh, I'll learn, I think, and uh, in the future it'll be a little bit better. But this is it, this is the final system. I think it came out great. I think it looks fantastic. You can see that all the colors inside are coordinated. I removed the sticker from the SSD. I also added in an EPS cable because the one that came with the power supply was black and yellow and it looked awful. So I, I didn't want to just deliver a system like that. So I, had, I have cables and I did give him uh, an EPS cable that was colored black, red, and and actually a little bit of white. But as far as the system goes, there are a couple things that I didn't discuss when I was just running down the parts because what I wanted to mainly focus on was the case. Uh, I did kind of want to make this into sort of like a case review. But the power supply that went in here is an EVGA 80 plus certified 430 watt power supply for a system that's running uh, Pentium G4400, Skylake chip, and GCX950 with just a single six pin power connector, no other accessories or anything like that. The 430 watts is going to be more than enough. There shouldn't be any problems at all. The power is clean. It should be absolutely fine. As far as memory, there's uh, there's eight gigs of uh, HyperX DDR4 in here, which for the purposes of this system, again, will be more than enough. World of Tanks is not exactly a system resource hog. So just taking a closer look inside this case, you can really see how the NZXT fans really tie everything together, as opposed to having the blue LED fan that came with the Intermax cooler. The all black color scheme of the tower and the two fans really create a contrast with the red interior and with the red accenting on the cables. I remove the sticker from the SSD as I normally do in most builds just to expose the black matte finish. That looks a lot better than having the ADATA sticker on there which was like silver and like a rainbowy color. I'm not entirely thrilled with the way that the wiring goes in this case. I feel like the cable cutouts and the grommets are a little bit further away from the motherboard that I, than I would like. However, I see why it was constructed that way, just because it allows for all cables to go through one hole, uh, as far as like the SSD and the front panel connectors and the SATA connectors and all that, they all get routed through one hole as opposed to having multiple holes in the back of the chassis. So I, I understand Fantex's logic in constructing a case like that. However, it does create a little bit of extra wire mess when you're looking at the case and you have to have all those wires, you know, uh, moved over to the side a couple inches in order to, to get in behind the motherboard tray. 
But with that being said, building in this case was awesome. There is so much room in here for a mini ITX system while still being small. Like this is not a large case. This is much smaller than the Manta. You know, it has plenty of room for cable management behind it. It has a PSU shroud, which I really dig. It has, has this cool SSD mounting tray in the front, which allows the graphics card to get slotted in and underneath. So you, you actually could just hide your PCIe cable, even if you have an ugly one, nobody would even see it. The front panel connector IO is long enough without being too long. It allowed me to reach wherever I needed to on the motherboard without having so much extra that I had to tie it up somewhere. There's a lot of flexibility in this case as far as what you want to mount for a cooling solution. It, all, it has plenty of height for a tower style air cooler. It also has mounting positions in the front and the top for radiators. So if you want to go with an AIO or even a custom loop, there's plenty of room in here to do that. The panel where I have the SSD mounted actually will double as a pump mount if you want it to. So you could have your pump and res mounted right here <laughs> no. So you can have your pump and res mounted right here without any issue. Other than that, I really have nothing but good things to say about this case. The build quality on it is fantastic. There's not a huge amount of flex to the side panels, although they are pretty small, so you wouldn't expect them to have a huge amount of flex no matter what. There's a lot of flexibility in here as far as mounting points for the different components. I really like choice when I'm making my build so that I'm not locked into using any single component in any single configuration. I was really impressed with the amount of cable routing options in the back behind the motherboard tray. And this top bracket here, actually pulls out to allow you to mount uh, an AIO or a radiator for a custom loop and make it a lot easier, easier to do so. You don't have to actually try to maneuver everything up and inside the case. You just pull the bracket out, mount everything, and slide, the, slide it back in. But as you can see, I mounted the LEDs along the top here. They're gonna provide a good amount of illumination down and into the case. And when this is a, a little bit a darker situation, you can really see that it does light up the entire interior. There's no need for more than one strip in here. I mean, unless you're going for some kind of crazy effect, but I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of illumination down onto the tower cooler and down onto the graphics card. And I think that really has accomplished that. So that's it guys, we're all done. This is client build 40. This is actually getting delivered this afternoon. I called the guy uh, a little bit before, told him that the system was ready. I actually tried out World of Tanks uh, on the maximum settings at 1080p. It was running at like 80 or 90 FPS. So this, is, this system is going to be perfect for him. I really hope he enjoys it and I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. So just a quick reminder guys, I am an Amazon affiliate. If you guys feel like supporting the channel, any money that comes in through the Amazon affiliate account actually goes directly to the channel to support what we do. So click on those links down below. Anything linked in the video description is through the account. As always guys, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video, which is actually gonna be an RX 480 Crossfire comparison versus the GTX 1070 and 1080, I can't wait. All right, see you guys, thanks a lot.